My name is Jorge Rodriguez. I'm be the host and the moderator of this session that uh, uh, will see three extremely interesting presentations about teaching, two of them about teaching on architecture and urbanism, and one about a visibility tool. And without further ado, well, you know the drill that we have in this session is going to take us till 11 o'clock. Then we have a coffee break and a brief demonstration. So uh, without any further introduction, introduction, I would like to welcome Claudia Monteiro, who will present a paper co-authored with Peter Oliveira, Changing Methods in Teaching for Strengthening the Relation Between Research and Practice. So, good morning. Um, our presentation will address the gap between scientific research and professional practice on um, urban landscapes. Our field is not uh, different from others, and this gap exists in many fields of knowledge. In our case, uh, urban studies, uh, the break has been in the center of the debate over the last two decades. This table uh, is based in another one that was published by Michael Bark in 2013, and it tries to illustrate how different these two worlds are. You can pick any line of the table, uh, and I'm sure you will agree that these are two different worlds. So it's not easy to, to link uh, what we are doing in research uh, and what we do in practice uh, it's not easy, but many of us have been trying to bridge these two worlds. For this presentation, uh, we will divide uh, these many attempts into three different groups, tools, agents, and processes. Saying that uh, the main focus of our presentation will be on processes. So, first, the tools. Um, these are many times uh, named planning support systems. Uh, the focus on tools tries to design something in academia that can be useful for planning practice or architectural practice, uh, but our concern here is uh, more related to planning practice. Uh, we believe that a key idea uh, when we talk about tools is get back to the basics to produce simple things. It's not to make the thing too abstract, but we should be able to identify simple things that can have an impact on planning practice. Uh, map, morphological analysis, and prescriptions is just one example of these tools that I have designed in my PhD. Map is designed to describe explain, and explain urban form and to prescribe rules for conservation and change. It brings together three morphological views, historical, geographical, process, typological, and configurational approaches. The main focus of MAP is on the town plan as a fundamental concept that defines the great options that we made on the ground. In urban planning, we'll have many options to make, but town plan, how we design our street systems, our plot patterns, and where we place our buildings is the first decision that make shape all others. A second focus could be on agents. To illustrate this path, I'm going to show you some examples of a book that my colleague Vitor Oliveira has just published last year. The books present several projects, plans, and policies made by architects, uh, urban planners, and geographers that do mostly research, but from time to time go to practice. On this slide, we have just two examples. Uh, the design of a conservation policy in Pingyao in China, based on Konzinian theories and methods, a chapter signed by Jeremy Whiten, uh, in the house in Brasilia, 
in Brazil, framed by space syntax approach designed by Frederico de Holanda. Uh, we could have shown the chapters by Ivor Samuels, Giuseppe Straffa, Wo Ding, or several others that have contributed with their experience in uh, her practical experience. And finally, the third group could be on processes. Processes of linking these two different worlds. In an editorial in 2000, uh, I'm certain that some of you have read, Jeremy Whitehand argued that the things that we are doing for bri bridging the two worlds are not enough. Sometimes when acting on research, we invite some practitioners for a keynote speech in our scientific conferences. Uh, other times, our colleagues in practice invite us, for instance, to be part of a jury to assess some development proposals. But many of it, these actions don't have a past and they do not have a future. Uh, so what we need to do is to build a process, a sequences of coordinated events that are extended in time. This is the key issue that I will show you next within a research project where we try to make the bridge with practice. Uh, this is an ongoing project, so we don't have results or findings, but we want to share with you some of the things that we have done so far. KAIBAP, Knowledge Alliance for Evidence-Based Urban Practice, is a, a research project founded by Erasmus Plus that has been developed since 2021. It involves eight partners from Croatia, Cyprus, Italy, and Portugal. Three universities, one research institution, one NGO, and three enterprises, two with a focus on architecture and one with a focus on planning. What we tried to build at Kaibab is this process that I was just talking before. This process involves students, teachers, researchers, and enterprise staff in teaching, research, and practice activities. It is made of a very high number of events where researchers and students are invited to, um, are exposed to the daily issues of practice and where practitioners are invited to see what we do on research. The project itself, it came from another project. Uh, both of them are led by our colleagues in Cyprus. The former project, EPUM, Emerging Perspectives on Urban Morphology, was also about building bridges. But in this case, about building uh, bridges between the different morphological approaches. Now we, and when I say we, it's because two of the partners are exactly the same, University of Cyprus and University of Porto. And one team has moved from um, Sapienza University to Isuf, Italy. So now we try to find ways of translating this morphological knowledge into planning practice and architectural practice. So it's a step forward. Again, we can see there is a process between EPUM and KAIBAP. In a more elaborated way, within KAIBAP, we try to create an educational and training process that offer participants the opportunity to engage with professional environments, learning how research can be the basis for innovative planning, professional practice, and on the other way around, understanding what these enterprises require from academia. To do so, we use three projects that are being developed by the three enterprise partners. One plan in Cyprus near Limassol, the Varangaria Master Plan, and two buildings. One common building in Porto for housing, and another one, a special building uh, in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, for a ministry. Using these projects as case studies and framed by a previous defined pedagogic model, we built this process where sometimes, as you can see in this table, 
the event is driven from the research side and it goes to practice and other times it is practice that launches the event. We have these five main types of events and I will start from those that came from research into practice and then with those that came from practice to research. Still, the first kind of event that we call small-scale activities, as you can see here, they are launched both by research and practice. So this is the larger and diverse group. It can be, for example, a webinar series like we did, uh, like the first we did last year, when each of the partners from uh, academia just explained his expertise in a very classic sequence of presentations but it can also be a rather different thing. Uh, for instance, right now we have one of these small scale activities happening. It's starting in early April and it will continue until the end of May. Called Introduction to Master Planning, academics, practitioners and students are invited to reflect on the Verengaria Master Plan. In fact, I have just returned from Cyprus when we were working with the, the team uh, that are developing this, this master plan and also attending a workshop that I will show you later. Uh, I can now also explain that uh, some activities are related to each other and students are invited to attend different activities. Some students came from university partners and some students came from open calls. Uh, just for you to have an idea, I in Below each activity are the names of the participants from the University of Porto in each type of event. So the second type of event is the international training workshops. It is a much more limited set of events. It comprises three workshops that happened last year. In each one, for one week, we were looking at the Riyadh project in Saudi Arabia also with the partners that are designing the building. The building, in, it's not uh, completed yet. So again, it's an opportunity to interact with practice. I, I will exemplify with the second workshop that we organized in University of Porto, just for you to have an idea what these workshops are. Riyadh is a very interesting case study because the city, until the mid 20th century, was quite contained within the city walls and very traditional. In the 60s and in the 70s, the city literally exploded with a rhythm of change that is unfamiliar for many of us and in clear rupture with tradition. And Riyadh continues to, to grow. We followed this idea of looking at historical and uh, geographical context to see what was lost over this growing process. For example, things like the concern uh, for privacy that is shaped by a certain cultural and religious context, or the way how this new urban expansion deals in a devastating way with the climate. We have discussed Riyadh's physical change for one week. Still, we have starting to work together in the months before for this week to be as productive as possible. Uh, in a way, what we tried to do was to explore urban morphology as a scientific support for a kind of an alternative way of looking at architecture. Here, in this workshop, the focus was on architecture. Moving to the third type of event, I could say that is practice that, uh, that drives the three events that I will show you next. This is called Business Models Workshop. The first has just happened in Cyprus, like uh, I said, I mentioned before, late April. Uh, it is one week activity uh, that is, sorry, led by international experts on this particular knowledge. And what they try to do is to expose our staff and students to examples of successful models of evidence-based practice and potential market and startup opportunities. And they expect that in the end, each of these participants can have a stronger business knowledge. And in a way, they can have this mind, 
this uh, business mindset, which are quite unfamiliar, special for us that um, are acting on research. The fourth type of event is the professional development sessions. Uh, we don't have the poster yet. This is a two-day event for just for Kaibab staff, aiming at improving professional skills by promoting innovation and entrepreneurship. The first one will happen in parallel with this summer school in Rome next June. The summer school is an additional event of Kaibab in, uh, in organiza the, um, organizing with the regional network of the International Seminar on Urban Farm, ISUF, and again, drivers from the research side. This is another opportunity to improve the scientific knowledge of our students. Uh, so here the objective is a bit different from the international training workshops. It's a set of lectures using Rome as a field for exposing the theories and concepts of urban morphology. Finally, we have the last type of event that is driven by practice. I will say that this the culmination of this relation between academia and these professional enterprises made by a number of students' internships. For instance, we, uh, University of Porto, will send two students to two enterprises for two months, but we send them to foreign countries so that, in addition to this more practical understanding of our research problems, they could also have a different <laughs> cultural context to complete their understanding of the urban landscape questions and challenges. So relating research and practice, it's not, uh, it's a very difficult task. Based on the recognition of several weakness of the physical form of contemporary urban landscapes with consequent impacts on the socioeconomic and environmental dimensions, we claim that effective change can happen by the improvement of knowledge and performance of professional in planning, urban design, and architecture. We have shown an effective way to exchange and co-create knowledge between research and practice by building an effective process where education plays a central role. We believe that if we want to do things differently, we, want, we have to start teaching things differently. Uh, this process, just to finish this, press, this process, in, is in clear contrast, contrast to one-time collaborations with, uh, um, or one-time events with no past or no future. Thank you very much for your attention.